This time on Low Boost, we finish up the brake upgrade on our Thrift Horse Mustang. So, believe it or not, when you swap these over, the six cylinder steering rack will hit the oil pan when we put the 351 in. So we are gonna have to swap it out to the eight cylinder one. So I'm in the process of taking that off and then popping this out and then removing those two bolts up there. And that should drop the rack because the tie rods are already disconnected and then we'll put in the V8 rack as well that came in the kit. All right, next, after everything's out, I'm gonna reinstall the booster. I might grind some of that down and just spray that with black paint. But either way, next thing we got the bracket that gets installed there, then the booster, and then the bolts go on last. And what we do is, um, I already bled it before, and it came with some bleeding tubes. So you hook up the bleeding tubes to those two yellow things, and then um, you add brake fluid in, and then pump the, and then pump it manually until uh, there's no air coming out of it. So in order to <clears throat> upgrade this to the V8 suspension or the V8 steering, um, we are gonna actually have to uh, take the pitman arm off instead of replacing the steering box, which we really don't wanna replace the steering box. And we have a pitman arm removal tool and hopefully this is gonna do it. Uh, we tried a bunch of other stuff and it didn't really work. So let's see if this works. Starting to slide off. Turn that off. I just gotta hold the pitman arm removal tool where it is. So it doesn't rotate on me. So what I ended up doing was I used the cutoff wheel just to slice into this just ever so slightly just so I could actually start spreading the metal apart. And then now slowly working. Yeah. As you can see, I just sliced through it ever so slightly there. Hopefully it didn't mess up the, uh, the spline. And it doesn't look like it did, so. We should be okay. All right, so after we got the pitman arm off, use a lot of anti-seize to get it where it needs to go. This steering rack lines up a little bit different. So what you see here is the V8 steering rack. Everything is all buttoned up and put in, but this rack does sit a little bit lower, a little bit lower than the, uh, than the other one. So. And it looks, it's got different geometry and how it works, but it's all up there. And we adjusted the tie rods as much as we could. And we put the new pitman arm. Now I remembered, I scored this part here on the, on the steering rack where the pitman arm goes in. So I knew exactly where to put the new pitman arm in. So all that is in there as it's supposed to be. I just got to hook up the fuel lines and you know, make sure everything else is copacetic, but uh, this is actually what it looks like from the inside when it's all complete. Next, we mounted the new master cylinder which has two reservoirs in it. And it also has a proportioning valve down here if you want bias to the back or the front. So uh, we can adjust that once everything's in. Uh, the pedal is connected on the other side with the clips, but uh, we're gonna wait to tighten everything down in the back until we really find the perfect amount of travel with the brake pedal. This is the first look with these wheels and tires. Uh, that one's gonna get cleaned up. And the front, the springs are gonna sit a lot higher right now because these springs are designed for an eight cylinder and right now there's a six in there. But it sits pretty good, you know, obviously it should settle a little bit once it's on there. Got some extra camber in the front. 
there, we're just gonna have to adjust that. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. Definitely a huge improvement over those awful, awful six cylinder wheels. So the only modification that I had to make with this kit was basically that right there where the, the brake line goes into the other thing. Um, that's the rear brake line and that used to go into here. So I had to bend this 90 degrees to get that to fit. Uh, it fits and it works and everything's in there. Uh, but this used to go straight up into there. And so I did have to bend this brake line to get it to go in, but I got all new brake lines going to the back. So, uh, they're all, they're all easy to bend. They're all easy to manipulate. That was the only major thing that I had to do. So with all the connections on, that's how it looks. So, uh, you have your brake proportioning valve to the, the to the right there that goes in. These are perfectly fit bending around and through, except for the one that I talked about. And then there's a proportioning valve underneath where you could just turn a knob to make it go more biased to the front or to the back. Of course, we want it more biased to the front because that's where the good brakes are. So, but yep, that's all. Now, it definitely is easier to do this with the six cylinder in it because once the V8 is in it, it's probably gonna come out to here and it'll be harder to get the stuff. So definitely better to do it before you pull the motor out or before you put the new one in. All right, so everything's buttoned up. Put the clip back on the brake pedal. It's really hard to film down there, so sorry if I didn't get that. Um, all you gotta do now is bleed the brakes. So we're just gonna line everything up, raise the car up a little bit, and we'll bleed the brakes. I gotta check and see what the order is. I don't know if there's an order, but uh, we'll double check on that and let you know. But man, this thing looks good. That looks so good with the discs. And then we got our new shock tower as well as our new springs and our new KYB gas adjust shocks front and rear should really make this thing ride good. So what I like about this is it has that brake duct right there if you see it, which is pretty cool. It helps with uh, with cooling your brakes while you're driving. Not that we're gonna be doing any heavy tracking, but this brake setup is definitely a huge, huge upgrade to what it had. All right, so now the brakes are all on, front, rear, everything's hooked up. As we started to bleed it, there was a couple of spots where it started to leak, so we just gotta tighten down all our fittings and make sure there's no leaks. Still not ready to test it out on the road yet because it's got a bunch of snow, three feet of it. But um, we did right rear, left rear, right front, left front for bleeding them. And now we're gonna try them out. So we're gonna spin this hard, hit it. Ooh, it worked. This thing's lock up. These, will, these grip better than the rears. When these things grip, they grip. Um, might, you can adjust the pedal as well. If you want less pedal travel or more pedal travel, I have it so there's more pedal travel because we really want to get used to nice sharp stopping disc brakes, but we don't have a, a power brake booster. It's just manual brakes still. But I think that the manual brakes should be good with this setup. So let me know what you guys think. I do want to touch on one last thing when in, in regard to this project. Yes, as I said before, it would have been easier just to get a V8 Mustang and we would already have some of these better parts, but when a car is as old as this car is, a lot of that stuff's gonna need to be replaced anyway and upgraded to stuff that's not rusted or rot or anything else like that. So in our case, it really worked out okay because all that stuff should be upgraded anyway. So we just upgraded from the six cylinder stuff to the eight cylinder stuff. That does wrap up the entire brake upgrade. Unfortunately, we have a ton of snow and the roads were all salty. So I'm really unable to do a test like I did before. Uh, with the brake stop from 50 miles an hour, but trust me, I'm going to do it as soon as the weather turns around and we have all the salt off the road. So make sure you guys stay up to date and hit that subscribe button. In the next episode, I'm gonna do a little bit of welding and put on a couple of braces and some spots in the car that could really use some reinforcement from it being sworn out over time underneath the car. So make sure you guys stay up to date on all my uploads on the Mustang. Don't forget to check out a bunch of other stuff that I have, not just on the Mustang, but I have a C5 Corvette, old school BMW turbo LS swap. My dad and I are restoring a 1953 Ford F100 pickup truck. Got a lot of cool stuff on the channel, so make sure you guys check that out. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.